Those of us who work in healthcare know full well that we have to take the bitter with the sweet. And that is very evident to me today as I'm celebrating my thousandth YouTube subscriber with this video on the coronavirus. But this um, epidemic has been very impactful to me and my work. And so I want to share some things that I've learned. Um, I've made some mistakes and I'm hoping that you can avoid some of the same mistakes that I've made. Um, and also, uh, I want to just give a quick shout out to my dad. We normally have lunch today. Um, but we won't be having it because of some of the cons constraints and considerations required for working in healthcare um, in the presence of uh, a pandemic. So first off, um, how do we avoid uh, getting or spreading the Ebola coronavirus um, in the course of our work at the hospital? Um, so first off, just we need to ask, what is this? Well, my fifth grader explanation of it is it's the flu plus pneumonia. It's not a runny nose, that's the common cold, and it's not spread airborne, it's spread primarily by droplet. So how does it work? Well, what we know um, from the CDC, and it's going to be important to track with what the CDC is providing us, um, is that it has a clinical presentation that's kind of mixed because, of, again, it looks similar to the flu. So, but it has an incubation period of anywhere from four days to possibly 14 days. So I've known people who have been impacted by quarantines of two weeks. Um, the signs include things like fever, cough, fatigue, and shortness of breath. And the risk factors remain unclear at, even as of this date, although um, the CDC has indicated that severe um, illness, uh, it can uh, risk factors related to it could be um, older patients and those with uh, chronic health conditions. How do we treat it? Well, it's gonna, the treatment's going to vary according to the severity. If the patient's experiencing acute respiratory distress or any kind of secondary infection, um, we're going to be using oxygen and ventilation. These radiologic findings are of interest. This was a, a case that was reported on Radiopedia um, very recently. And what the CDC is saying is that the CT images um, are showing bilateral involvement for most patients. And we see these areas, multiple areas of consolidation and ground glass opacities. Uh, however, uh, there is one study out there that says that from time of symptom onset to initial CT scan, about 50% 56% of patients um, had a normal CT scan. So uh, again, laboratory results, lab diagnostic testing, laboratory findings are going to be what will guide us in terms of diagnosis. Let's talk about ways we can avoid contracting this, um, even if we're working around it. And the first one just kind of goes back to patient care 101, um, standard precautions, hand hygiene. Um, I always sing myself happy birthday because it takes about 30 seconds. I sing it kind of slow. It makes me feel happy. And uh, I know that I've washed my hands an appropriate amount. Wearing gloves uh, and removing them after use seems like a no-brainer, but um, how often do we get lazy or forgetful? And then mask and eye protection. It's going to be your friend, particularly where we're dealing with a droplet precaution. And then wearing a gown. And, of course, washing your scrubs. Now, there's been some... Snopes reporting uh, and some false news out there saying that laundry detergent can kill the coronavirus. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, so don't make the mistake that I made and, and say that something is true when it, it might not be that case. Um, for that reason, I'm going to be very mindful of uh, false claims going forward. So using things like Snopes um, to do uh, testing on things. So here's some of the Uh, the self-check that you can hold your breath for 10 seconds, it's false. Um, there's no validity in that. Um, drinking water, of course, is always a good idea, especially if you're ill, um, but it's not yet confirmed whether or not stomach acids kill the viruses. Um, so be very mindful that there's false claims out there now, especially on Facebook and in social media, and do not fall prey to those. Well, thank you so much um, to everyone. Please comment and subscribe and share. And the last thing I'll leave you with is that it's important for us to consider um, the commitment to patient care that we have. And so I want to give you an encouragement from Cyprian. This was um, the early church was responding to a plague that was affecting numerous people. And what Cyprian wrote is all the injury inflicted by present troubles is to be despised in the assurance of future hope.
And so I share that with you as an encouragement. Be grateful for the health that you have and meet people in the midst of their suffering with genuine hope. Thank you.